Okay, this is the vehicle that I'm going to start with. Um, it's fairly obvious what it is. It's a 3, 3A short wheelbase. This vehicle wasn't in too bad a condition uh, with regard to the bodywork. And most of the mechanics are in reasonable order as well. However, when it comes to the chassis, uh, that was a different story. You've all seen these things, and we all know that they rust around the rear or they have a shunt and someone has to repair them. What's surprising about this, and I haven't seen one this bad, not in terms of a trust, I've seen worse than that, as you would have, but the way that it's been repaired is pretty appalling. Uh, we can see here that somebody's had a crack at, uh, you wouldn't even call it welding, to be honest, uh, and it, it shouldn't be allowed. I don't know how these, this happens. Uh, someone's uh, bought some outriggers. Again, it's not even welding. I mean, it's not hard to find a mate, surely, and bribe him with some bears. And even a pissed mate with one arm and no eyes could probably weld better than what this guy's done. It's absolutely appalling. Not only that, I put a straight edge on this outrigger here, just so I could line up this other outrigger to see how this chassis had fared. Um, it's unbelievable that that straight edge is on the back of the outrigger. And this one here is 60 mil away. If I line this straight edge up with that cross member, you can see what's happened here. Well, I don't know what's happened here. How did they even get the body on? Uh, it's it's got to be 50 or 60 mil out. So just dreadful, dreadful work. Um, there's been a few repairs in the front, but nothing major. So my intention is to use this chassis as a, a basic layout and I'll build a jig around it. I'll use these pickup points for the springs as the primary locators. Uh, my plan is to um, use the uh, military design for the cross member under the gearbox so that it can be bolted in and bolted out so we don't have that problem of uh, if you want to remove a gearbox. And probably one of the things I'll do immediately is uh, also um, think about some extra gussets because I know that the LVVT guys in New Zealand are more interested in making a little bit, uh, adding more than you need just so that they've got comfort and thinking about um, some of the redundant bracketry on this car. Um, the other thing that we will look at straight away is these mounts for the shock absorbers. As we all know, uh, they are generally, they wear quite badly here. In fact, here's a pretty good example. Um, simply because they're split pin doesn't pull the rubbers up tight enough and you get all sorts of movement everywhere. So what I'll do is I'll replace that with a, uh, a nylock nut and a washer and it's threaded and I'll basically weld that in there. So that instead of putting a split pin in here and a washer and relying on that, uh, we'll have a nut that can screw the thing up tight. And I know there's some mods that have been done like that, so it, and people are happy. We had a crack at some parts. Uh, this is purchased from a supplier in the UK. That's how it comes. Not an unreasonable job. I don't know why we have these. It's not the right way to reinstall this product, but it makes it easier. And so I've just recently made these guys. It's the same material. It's nice and square. Uh, the welding is full penetration and to me it looks nicer and I know what I'm doing. So the debate is, do we have these uh, gussets or that, that fish plate welded onto the back? Can you weld that onto your chassis or do you use this and learn how to weld properly? Um, the problem with that, if it's rusted in the corner, I know you do have to be careful. So there is an advantage in having that plate on at times. But uh, there's plenty of reasons not to as well. Okay, that's enough yibbity yabba from me. I'll drop this video in and I'll talk to you and show you more as the days go by.